so we're right. we're here opening um, this lovely package built by Amber herself that is housing her beautiful stained glass windows that she has made for my lovely in-laws and they're going to be hanging them in these sections here and taking out the, the cheesy the cheesy version. <laughs> Amber has power tools. She's going to uh, uh, be measuring yeah. after she I'm pretty excited to see this in person. I've seen lots of pictures, yeah. but I haven't shared I only, them with you. <laughs> I only saw the very beginning. Uh, I kept it a secret from her. Oh, yes. you did? I only saw, I saw like one picture at the very beginning mm -hmm. of the process, the creative process, and it was gorgeous then. And I could see that it's going to be a little awesome. shit. Awesome. Yeah, I showed her like the first little piece of flower or something, and then after that, I'm like, nope, now it's gonna be a surprise. So she's just dying. Yeah, Tim likes to do surprises, and I love giving everything away. I always tell people what I got them two months before Christmas because I can't wait. The suspense is killing me. How long have you been doing stained glass? Um, I started. It's an interesting process, actually. When I was a child, I was working on stained glass, so I always made a little Christmas ornaments with my grandma whenever I would see her. And it was only a few times here and there. Um, but then, when I was living in Conifer and visited my family, my grandma decided she didn't want to do stained glass anymore. So she gave me a milk crate of glass and a really old grinder and some basic tools. Just She's enough. the one that taught you. Yes, yeah, she, first. Oh, cool. She taught me first. She taught me some basics yeah. some boiling. And it was when I drove over there at the time, I put it in my little trailer and drove it back to Conifer. Mm -hmm. And I was telling my friend Marlene about it. And she's like, my mom does stained glass. Are you interested in um, possibly buying her materials? I'm like, oh, that sounds kind of cool. And I didn't think of it much until she sent me the inventory list. Two 10 foot by six foot tables three glass racks, shop, you know, <laughs> um, it was like about $10,000 worth of material. I'm like, who is this lady? And she's like, oh, my mother's been um, reconstructing and building stained glass windows for the entire Durango area. She's been, she did almost every single church in Durango. And I'm like, holy shit, this lady's famous. Hey, <laughs> yeah. family friendly, please. <laughs> I don't. Bleep. I don't have bleeps. Holy, bleep. um, holy cow! <laughs> this lady is like awesome. Well, and um, so she, was she had a studio. Yeah. She had her most amount in studios. Mm -hmm. She's just the sweetest, sweetest lady ever. Um, she, I contacted her, and she's like, "Why don't you spend a week at my house? I'll teach you what I know, it, you know, as efficiently as possible, and at the end, assess what stuff you want, and we'll just make a deal." Mm -hmm. So I borrowed a friend's dual axle 15 foot trailer, hopped it on my FJ, drove it down Wolf Pat, Wolf Creek, or whatever mm -hmm. that huge pass in Durango, or you know, wherever that was. Stayed at her house for a week. <laughs> And we had so much fun. Um, we'd start at seven o'clock in the morning all week long, stopped at seven o'clock at night, and then we watched American Idol afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so um, in that length of time, she taught me how to do triple pane insulated windows and how to make lamps. Wow. And at the time I was like, is this my calling? I bought everything she had, filled it in a 15 foot tr uh, trailer from the hill, lead, 500 pounds of lead. I couldn't even <laughs> tell you how much the weight of glass was. All the, everything, everything she had. Did you have room at home for it? No. No. <laughs> Not I'm at like, the time. She I does now. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to wing it because that's usually how I do things. I am so excited for this on so many I'm levels. I'm very hopeful that this um, looks right. Look at this beautiful so this crate is, you have made. This is how I made it. Oh my god! Oh. So this is my baby. Oh, look at this, Sean. And I'm just going to give it a little... This oh, is yeah. what I do oh, when goodness. I work on the panel. I'm like face into it. This is my <laughs> this is my common stance here. Yes. So, and you'll tell there's a little bit of an odor to it, but that is because the sealant, there's, oh. 
there's a glazing compound in there? Yeah, and it's soft gas. Yeah, yeah. And that's just pretty typical. So when we get these installed, I'm going to work with you to tell you how to clean them. It's okay. very important that you don't put solvent on these. Okay. Because what you'll do is you'll create um, an, a, an acidic reaction with this basic uh, glazing compound. It protects the lead. It keeps it from rusting and oxidizing. I need so, to learn how to take care of it. So I will show you how to do that and then and I will set. take good notes. <laughs> well, so, I'll be taking video too. Yes. Um, I reinforced this. This is actually zinc came. It looks a little different than mm -hmm. most lead pieces because it's so narrow. Mm -hmm. I didn't want it to have a lot of flex. So we, I used a zinc came to keep it um, stable. I also, in thinner areas here and here, I encased the came, because this is called came, mm -hmm. um, with a copper filament that if you do happen to bump into it a little bit, it won't flex much and it won't put stress on the thinner pieces. Right, right. You shouldn't have any breakage. This should not flex, even if you bump into it a little bit, if you have kids over and you should, shouldn't be too concerned. Don't let them lick it. <laughs> okay. Christy, don't it, lick that. It, it's very important. I gotta keep her away from It's it. very important. She has kids. Yes. You don't want to touch it yes. and eat because this is lead. It's yes. not sealed. Well, where they're going to be located, that probably won't be, right. you know, you never know. too big of a problem. But yeah, when I was a kid, I was in everything. Oh, so, sure. Um, no, I, I totally get it. That was ours. Okay. This is, this is wonderful. So, um, blow them away. So, what this I'm going to do amazing. is, um, Happy birthday, happy anniversary, oh, Merry Christmas, Happy Thanksgiving, you. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Kwanzaa. <laughs> Where's, my Where's my sweater? I haven't gotten that far yet. I might have to have Amber make that too. <laughs> so what I'm going to do here is um, instead of pulling from the top because you don't want to flex the right. panel, I'm going to pull it from the side. And I want to um, two sets of take my... Um, what? Do you need two sets of hands? No, no, no. Or you can do it. Okay. So there's a certain way you handle panels. You always grab from the sides, never the edges, right. and never the center. Right. Um, and we just lift up. Sort of like glass. Like that. Wow. Oh. Okay. It looks like you made it here so pretty turn smoothly. Turn around and, and show, isn't this? This is the back side. Okay. This is the front side. Um, there's important uh, lighting elements that we have to take into consideration when we install the windows, and we'll talk about that once we okay. pack and see both of them. This work is done in stages. Yes. And I know that you did a design a cartoon. Is it a I, okay, so sketch? what I did was I yeah, grabbed some influences from some books that Betty gave me, mm -hmm. and then I added some points that from the designs that she mm -hmm. took pictures yeah, of she, and sent to me. Yeah. So I drew the flowers on here. This is all part of the book theme and then I added little inspirations. So you did a the sketch for two sides? Yes. Yeah, then well, then not to size. I created a little mini pixel image. Okay. Because it's easier for me to draw and conceptualize the symmetry. Mm -hmm. Once I find the pattern that I like and get it approved, then I go to Staples or a blueprint company and they blow it up to my size requirements for okay. the window. And then I keep the little pieces of memory and then use the stencil and all that stuff. From the time that you sat down to think about it for the first time to the time that you put them in the box, how long was this process? So I I typically don't add style time to my time to, to build. Mm -hmm. My build time was 60 hours per. So it was 120 hours to build the pieces. Mm -hmm. It took me about 20 hours to finally decide on the design that I wanted. Originally, I had a very modern contemporary design. I wasn't too happy. I didn't feel like I, it matched your personality. You have a very floral, wonderful, bright personality. Yeah, yeah Christy told me the color palette that he wanted. And I looked online and, and I'm like, oh wow, there's so many. There's like these wonderful golds. And I had these jewel little pendants yes. that really brought in the jewels. And then oh, he wanted a hint of uh, ruby. And I'm like, okay, we'll just put this spot in there. You know, uh, the blues, I just fell in love with this um, bolo type of. Yeah, that blue, blue. is incredible. Yes. Peacocks. Peacocks. No peacocks. <laughs> <laughs> now, right. just, peacocks are only inspiring it it's with, a, with yeah, the color the choices color, the color and color stuff. Textures. And uh, we have just been talking at Starbucks, and I believe Amber is going to be starting her own YouTube channel. Yeah, there's, there's a possibility. <laughs> well, so there's one really important thing to learn when you're working with lamps or if you're working with windows mm -hmm. is the direction you want the texture to be in. 
Oh, yes. Okay, you always want the texture to be against the light coming in, because as the light refracts against the different textures, it brings in bodies of light in your home. Yeah, so that means we in. want the front side of the glass to be facing, facing into this, this room. Window. Yes, right. this, the window, this window is where all the light comes in. So when you make lampshades, you have all the texture inside. That way, you can bring all the, lamp, the light bulbs, all the light that brings out, you're getting all the body and texture. And so if you ever see lampshades with a texture on the outside, you didn't understand the concept right. of light refraction. <laughs> right. So um, that's an important thing about installing windows. Right. So we'll put the texture. Yeah, this is where our light floods from, so definitely. So explain what you're uh, trying to figure out right now. So because of the way zinc solders, it creates a little lift in the, the solder joints. Um, so what I want to do is get an adhesive backed weather stripping that's kind of like a foam uh, barrier to kind of allow the panel to kind of join with the, the uh, corner rounds so that there's, there's no gap Perfect. when you go to install it. Gaps create gut, dust and cleft and stuff like that. So um, you want to do a trim that's about as tall as the, the zinc edging is to hide those joints as well. So. And that looks like a good size to you? Yeah, the wind is perfect size. This is a great size edging. Um, so if you can mimic this, um, I think it would be great. And then find that double um, kind of like a spongy weather stripping. Um, we need about 40 feet of it. Okay. So that would be um, my edging. Well, you know, we can go to Lowe's with him and pick out what you need. Yeah. yeah. Sean gets to be a YouTube star. Sean gets to be a YouTube star. And he hates every minute of it. There's no pictures taken in Lowe's.